You know, I don't think I've said it enough. I love Grado headphones. And it dawned on me today why I love them, what the basis of this attraction is. And it's happening because I've been in this head lately of listening to a lot of horn speakers. I listen to JBLs, I've listened to Klipsch's, an avant-garde or two, and they all have this quality of liveness to their sound. There's a jump factor, there's a transient immediacy that you don't get with box speakers, um, other panel speakers, uh, electrostatic speakers. Now it's interesting that there's a parallel from there, right? There are electrostatic speakers, there are electrostatic headphones, there are planar magnetic uh, speakers and there's planar magnetic headphones. There's dynamic speakers and dynamic headphones. There's horn speakers, but no horn headphone. And yet, Grados have a, a horny sound, for lack of a better word, right? They have that jump, that immediacy, that, that thing that other types of headphones, driver type head, uh, drivers of headphones, don't really do. Now, some people say that Grado headphones are bright. And some people say that horns can be bright and too in your face and stuff, and a little coarse. Yeah, that's sometimes true of Grado headphones. There's no perfect headphone or no perfect speaker, so we have to make our choices. But the nice thing about headphones compared to speakers is they're usually a lot less money, and they're a lot smaller. So you can have lots of headphones easily. And in my arsenal of headphones, on my headphone tree that you guys have been looking at for a few years, and yes, someday I will make a video about the tree, but for now I'm going to do this love letter to Grado. Now, this is a Grado um, SR225. I like this headphone a lot. And, I, and actually, I was listening to my SR80s, which are about $100 uh, recently, and I, I misplaced them, but they look exactly like these. And all Grados have this quality. Cheap ones, expensive ones, they all kind of do it. I remember a few years ago, I was at a Chesky Records recording session. They were using a binaural head, which is a human size plastic head with microphones where the ears are as, a, as their microphone setup. So everybody was listening to the playbacks of the, of the sessions on headphones. And there was a pair of SR80s there. Now, mind you, I was just out in the church. This was recorded in a church. I was out in the church listening to the actual musicians and singers in the church. Then I go in and I, I pop on a pair of SR80s, $100 headphones. And I'm thinking, damn. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Now, on the table with all these other headphones, there were Odyssey headphones, there were Hi-Fi Man headphones, there were high-end Sony headphones. They sounded better in the sense of refinement and purity and transparency. But they didn't have that live jump factor of those SR80s. And that kind of blows my mind. Um, the other thing that's amazing about Grados is that they're open headphones and they're extremely open. The sound is not like clogged up inside your head. It's open. And that is also part of the reason that, that for me they sound so good. But it's the jump factor and that's, that's it. They're really efficient, they're, I mean highly sensitive, easy to drive, doesn't take anything to make them sound pretty damn good. Although I do like them with tube headphone amplifiers. Um, I used, a, I remember, a Woo, Woo Audio WA3, which is a $450 tube amplifier made in New York City one time, and I was listening to Grado RS1 headphones at a show, and I own RS1s, and I was like, wow, man, this, this tube amplifier really sings with these RS1s, but... Part of my, my thing here, my love letter to Grado, is you don't need to buy the expensive ones to get the magic of what Grado does that other types of headphones fail to do. For $100, I mean, I think the SR60, which is a little less, you know, it's funny, I'm not so crazy about the 60, but from the 80 on up, and I've heard many, probably most Grado models, they all share that jump factor, that lie factor that just gets me every time. Now, one thing I've, I've come to realize about Grados over the years is that how you position them on your head is, does change their tonal balance. So some people just pop them on and just it is what it is. But if you move them around on your ears, 
you'll hear where they kind of line up and it's kind of like speaker placement you got to place these a little more carefully to get what they do they can sound thin sometimes and i also find that replacing the ear pads with these are the kind of like cup shaped ear pads with the flatter ear pads helps bring out some warmth and body to the grado sound and those are easy to find on amazon just look for greater replacement foam ear pads and you will see many options and choices so that's the ramble for today grado if you've never really if you're a headphone person and uh you've never really given grado a chance give it a chance listen with open ears and if you're a, a speaker guy and you've never really got into headphones um especially if you're into horns you should listen to grado any grado any grado except an sr60 uh and see what you think and just pay attention to move them around on your head uh get them where they sound right and you might have your socks uh blown off could be could happen so uh let me know my name is steve guttenberg this is the audiophiliac daily show and it does come up daily so please come back off and see what's up i do equipment reviews headphone reviews speaker reviews lots of rants about all sorts of stuff a lot of music oriented stuff here something different hopefully every freaking day seven days a week thanks for watching